So and hey then, everyone, this is uh, Fire Alley and Smart Devin. Welcome back to the Mysteries of Hyrule. Today we're going to be super original. We're going to talk about what the Breath of the Wild might be about like everyone else. However, the difference between us and them is we looked at what they said, look at what we thought, and we're trying to mush it all together like we normally do. It might be two parts though, we have a lot of stuff here. The first thing we're going to do is try to put it down on the timeline. And we're also going to talk of some other oddball theories that we found. So, yeah, so the first timeline placement theory is the post scoured sword. Fire Alley, you can cover that now. Alright, so the post scoured sword theory is the one that's existed the longest due to their little show offs before E3 were like, hey, look, this guy has a sailcloth. Hey, look, he has a Sheikah eye, and stuff like that. So, supposedly. Uh, Aonume says that, actually no, he did say that it expands on the world scene in Skyward Sword, which is ba it, which can be taken directly in that direction, because he said it. It's like, Skyward Sword, this is that world. Okay, post Skyward Sword, done, right? No. But there is this idea of exploring a new world. There is a lot of the surface that you don't see. Link does not care to go in between places and see what's there. He only cares about getting to Zelda in the fastest way possible. So, in the Skyward Sword, you don't really explore much, and this game could be the one that connects the dots in between. There's also the fact that Link is right-handed in this game as well, to follow up with Skyward Sword Link. Or maybe it is Skyward Sword Link, we're not sure on that, S particularly because of the suspended animation thing. The sailcloth used to be in the game as well, like I said before, but they replaced it with the glider. But even even then, we still have numerous amounts of Sheikah connections, and the Sheikah were most active prior to Breath of the Wild. They were most active in Skyward Sword with all of the time shift stones and stuff that were all over the place. That was the most Sheikah stuff you ever saw, and they made robots and stuff there before. This is basically an expansion onto that. You get to really see what they're capable of here. Which would show off that they, this is a continuation of the people who made the robots of Skyward Sword. And there's also a Hylia statue in the Temple of Time. Counter argument. There are Koroks in this game and those don't happen until the Wind Waker. And then never again after that. Yeah, the repost to that theory is the Koroks are much more primitive. <laughs> In uh, in style than the co than the Kokiri, and they look a lot more like a Kikui than they look like a Kokiri. So it's not too far of a stretch to say they might have gone Kikui Korok Kokiri Korok. Yeah, and I actually did hear one theory on the internet that says, well, perhaps the Korok is the natural form of this race, and the Kokiri only looked like children to make Link fit in. <laughs> In Ocarina of Time, <laughs> the Deku Tree said, "All right, guys, we're all going to be people now." <laughs> it, so that's a possibility. It, would, it doesn't make much sense about that one, though, because looking like a human would make Ganondorf want to kill you, because then you look more Hylian, and he was not happy with the Highlands at the time. He would have been like, "Oh, a bush, let's burn it." Instead of, maybe oh, it's a kid, like let's slaughter him. Maybe they only looked like people to Link, and everyone else saw Koroks. <laughs> <laughs> you can't disprove that, I don't think. I can't, you can't disprove that! Actually, that no, 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 sorry, yeah. But she um, might be special. Uh, no, I Mido guess. too, Mido too. You see Mido out at the end of the game, so... That, that is not... Maybe. You can't, yeah. we have just disproven it. We, d we tend to oh, do that it. here. Oh, you got me. Mido's also right, the reason so... why you can uh, say that the Deku Tree is a liar. You're yeah. gonna die. Oh yeah, Deku Tree, I'm gonna follow Saria out of the forest. Hey, look, I'm alive. I'm sure they will die if they leave the forest. They will also die if they stay in the forest. That's how life works. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so our next timeline theory is that it comes after Twilight Princess, which is the one that I'm hoping happens, because I love Twilight Princess about as much as I love... Majora's Mask, and if you watch the series, you know how much I love Majora's Mask. So, the evidence behind the post-Twilight Princess theory is that the Master Sword that we see, completely rusted, to tattered, banged up, no, it's been a long time since that thing has been around. We see the Elden Bridge, or what's presumably the Elden Bridge in the game. It could be a 
the Bridge of Hylia, also seen in Twilight Princess, we're not sure. And this is a rumor. Anume supposedly said it takes place, the game takes place 100 years after Twilight Princess. But I looked around the internet and I could not find this statement. But then again, there's a whole bunch of stuff on the internet about Breath of the Wild. Rumors flying around left and right. I can't really prove or disprove whether Anume said this or not. But if it's 100 years later and Link's been asleep for 100 years, that'd make the hero of the Breath of the Wild, the hero of Twilight. So it's also possible that the hero that the hero of Breath of the Wild has amnesia. Something strange is that we have Wolf Link inside Breath of the Wild, which kind of supports the Twilight Princess the sequel theory because uh, Wolf Link exists in the hero child timeline. However, if there are, if Wolf Link is in the game and they do say it's Wolf Link, it's not just some random. Then that means there's two links. There's either two links at the same time. Or Link is just traveling around with himself. To be honest, I wouldn't be opposed to either because I love the idea of Link traveling around with other Link. Yeah, people have had that idea before. We might be converging on that. Yeah, it reminds me of the Hero Shade. The interesting thing is the appearance of Wolf Link is like when he ports down from this from this guy with Midna. So you're kind of questioning where Midna came from. But, but either way... There's actually been more references in uh, Twilight Princess itself, such as Hero Mode Link is right-handed, and then the other one is you see a portrait of Breath of the Wild in the game. So That's in the, what's it called? It's precursor to Melo Mart, the super expensive hero shop. Yeah. Uh, we, and so this whole, like, Wolf Link thing is a little confusing, but it would definitely support the Twilight Princess thing along with that right-handed ordeal. Because they basically just canonized both. There's also the idea that, uh, well, Wolf Link might just not be canon because it's an amiibo. Right, and, and so it's hard to draw that line because it sounds like they're going to do it more than once, too. Yeah, we keep running into this problem where we can't really tell what is canon. Are all the side quests canon? Does Link canonically help that guy out in Scoured Sword, or does he give the, his love letter to the hand in the toilet? We don't know what is canon. Right. And there's some other evidence to back that up that we'll get onto later. Yeah. But the problem is that you don't see Kokiri, Koroks, or anything in Twilight Princess. They, you go inside a dead tree, which some people think that's the Deku tree, so that kind of goes against Twilight Princess, because that would mean that they died. Unless they left and came back later, which is also kind of hard to prove. But it's not totally out the window either, I guess. Well, it's not out the window. Remember in Wind Waker, the Koroks are going all over the world, planting Deku tree seeds. But the, thing is, but the thing is, before this, they were the Kokiri, so it's hard to pinpoint Unless how they, they would only have changed like... this fast and so forth and so on. I mean, we just talked about how they could just look like Kokiri just for Link. But, yeah, I mean... but we kind of disproved that with Mido and Saria. Yeah, I mean, I guess uh, Mido's a tough nugget because he's mean to Link, but how mean is he to Link? Is he the person who goes to Link and says, you're adopted? Or is he, like, <laughs> bitterly, brutally honest with Link? Does he know he has to be nice to Link, or does, does he just get jealous sometimes? What is Mido's thought process when he's mean to Link? I have no idea. I don't think we'll ever find out. Um, are we going to yeah. cover the other Twilight Princess-related theory right now, or will we do that later? Let's go for it right now, because you just mentioned it. All right, so there's another theory that we kind of saw coming together with... Well, I kind of pieced this together just barely, actually. I kind of saw that the rusted Master Sword, and it's like, it's really hard to kill the Master Sword. Something has to be acting on it from the inside. So... Uh, in our Dark Link episode, we talked that it was that if Link, that when Link touches it, like, pfft, you, the evil gets exploded out of him, and then it inflates into an evil person or something like that. Or, or it's created by Ganon or something like that. Any of these still work here. Um, so, essentially, the thought is, before Breath of the Wild happened, and maybe av and after Twilight Princess, the Dark Link, in Link's basement, in the mirror... Because I'm going to put the image up again from Twilight Princess HD this time. You see Dark Link in that mirror. There's no real way to disprove it. That sword is unsheathed. His is sheathed. And according to the laws of physics, you're not going to get a glint off the mirror if there's no light source behind the mirror. 
and it's pitch black in there. The only light source is behind you, so you would see a silhouette, if anything else. So the way you see that just kind of points towards this being Dark Link. I just got confirmation that the Master Sword is that you don't see Dark Link unless you have the Master Sword equipped it on you. So Oh, that's interesting. So that does prove that Dark Link is advancing and forming through the events of Twilight Princess as Link is defeating evil. It's like this understory that happens under Link's house. <laughs> yes, the stories of Twilight Princess brought to you by Link's basement. <laughs> Dark Link could have eventually formed in the mirror after, they, uh, after he becomes the hero of Twilight, and he comes out looking for Link, and because Link puts the Master Sword back, he, uh, the Dark Link can take him out, and after he defeats Link, he's badly injured, and so they have to go, you know, like, super incubate, super thing on him, possible amnesia. And so, because of this, we have the, the Master Sword begins to fall apart because the biggest counter to the Master Sword would be the evil that it banished from its, from its chosen wielder, from Fee's chosen wielder. So, because of this, the only thing that could, to, that could start destroying it would be uh, the other Master Sword. And that's why it begins to kind of rust, is because its power was taken or s maybe even stolen by the Dark Link. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the, the Dark Link does not hurt my head nearly as much as time travel episodes do. However, Dark Link is a very big wild card because no one has any clue what he is. He may be sentient, he may be a robot, fi, I don't know, just mindless demon meant to kill Link. Gearheim. But hey, he doesn't talk. <laughs> he doesn't talk, so I always assumed that he was just like some mindless demon. Before I realized that Link doesn't talk either. Yeah. <laughs> so, we really don't know anything about Dark Link. I don't know, maybe a future game will get more information on Dark Link, but for now he's just a wild card. Our next theory, uh, for where we can put it on the timeline, is after Spirit Tracks in the uh, adult timeline, because the whole game's got this idea of the exploration of New Hyrule. Uh, it's the idea of exploration, it, the place we could be exploring is New Hyrule. The Koroks would definitely exist in this timeline. However, the Master Swords should definitely be underwater and stuck in Ganondorf's head. The, the repost to this uh, theory is that it could have taken a hundred years to unflood Hyrule with Sheikah technology. I mean, it's just kind of like there, and the land looks like it got watered down. I mean, if you look at it, it's gorgeous. Grass is everywhere. Everything looks re really polished, green, and nice. You're not seeing too much of a desert, I don't think. Is there a desert? Uh, there is. Okay. You see, in the trailer, in, not in the Great Plateau, because that's where the demo took place. We only got to explore one area in the demo. But in the trailer, we definitely saw what looked like a deep canyon dry desert area. So that's, I guess, another counter-argument to your counter-argument. <laughs> but there was already a desert before, so it's it's hard to say. The hole in the ozone uh, layer might still be there. I don't know. We've she never really drained... pollution problems. We've never really flooded and drained a desert in the real world, so it's hard to tell what would happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If, anyone, if anyone's tried this, let me know what happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, uh... It's possible that the, that the Sheikah could have unflooded Hyrule there, and so Link walks over, tries to pull the sword out of our good Ganon friend's head. So, so what happens when Link pulls the Master Sword? Ganon just pops out of the ground. <laughs> yeah, we don't really know. Reanimate. I mean, we got Calamity Ganon stuck in the Hyrule Castle. So, is, does that I mean, mean the Master Sword? He doesn't have in the, the Triforce of Infinite Life anymore, so we're not sure. Uh, I don't know, maybe Ganondorf's just stubborn enough to come back to life this time. Yeah, I mean, he's still got the Demise junk, which we yeah, will come to later, possibly in a yeah. part two. We, we don't know yet. Alright, so the next timeline theory we have is that it takes place after the Wind Waker. Fire Alley, you can take this one. Alright, so uh, the post-Wind Waker content kind of is pretty short. But, you know, Koroks were like, hey, Koroks, they plant trees. Trees drink water. That's how this works. Well, yeah, and Wind Waker, they also mentioned, I think, that they plan to drain the water from the ocean. 
It's now that I think about it. Uh, isn't that bad? What if there's like some guy sailing, and then all of a sudden he's just like in a desert? All right. All right We've that's... also got Death Mountain and the Bridge of Elden, which I guess uh, they don't really tell us much about the timeline, other than, well, it's later rather than sooner. Could be. But hey, that could just be. That could be just any old Hylian bridge. We don't know. So the last timeline theory that we have is that the time the Breath of the Wild takes place after. Zelda 2, The Adventure Link. If Link dies, we've seen Hero defeated timelines again, I think we're going to get another one. So Link dies in Zelda 2, the, the Adventure of Link. And in the Breath of the Wild, the shrine that you wake up in as Link is called the Shrine of Resurrection. You can see it. That's, that's what it's called, Resurrection. The pod that he awakes in is labeled in Sheikah Tech's Care Unit. So I guess it's possible that we got like this re they're trying to reanimate Link's corpse to defeat Ganon and it just takes 100 years to reanimate his corpse and defeat to defeat Calamity Ganon. There's also the whole kind of wounded idea cuz it's not it's not called the revival unit it's called the care unit. So it's possible we have an avatar or Princess Bride thing where he's only mostly dead. <laughs> Mostly and so dead. They wait is for different. the right time to revive, to bring him back into the world and fight Ganondorf. Yeah, so Link just became is. mostly dead when Ganon returned. They spilled his blood, but I don't know. He was still squirming. Or Dark Link was only. Beaten. Or Dark Link just left, just beat him up to the point where he couldn't fight back, and Dark Link wouldn't die because he died. All right. So we have this question that obviously rises: How did Link die? Well, in the original. Announcement trailer for Breath of the Wild, or as it was known back then, Zelda U. We see Link fighting this guardian, and some people think, well, maybe that killed him. <laughs> and then he's being revived from his fight with the guardian. But I personally think it's much more likely that he was at the end of the hero defeated timeline. Ganon, like, kills him, or he gets mostly dead. And then the Sheikah, or Zelda, or someone decides, uh, let's keep this guy around. Can we, like, does anyone know how to bring back the dead? I mean, this Ganon guy's done it a number of times. I'm sure we can do it at least once. <laughs> so, while Ganon's always reviving himself, saying, uh, I want a rematch, guys. Yeah, we're not, I'm not done with you yet, Link. Now it's Link's turn to call on round two. He says, come back here, Ganon. Round two. There's also so, the possibility... We don't know much about Calamity Ganon at this point, but I kind of can't help but think it might be be like an oblivion wing thing you know like where this thing comes down and just like kills you death cloud <laughs> and so that might have just like <laughs> killed everything and now <laughs> but with it but we're like that's okay we have magic water we can revive link oh 100 years until raw until use okay we have to wait everyone <laughs> <laughs> they were all out of fairies so they had to use a pod of some sort. All right. Our uh, our episode's running a little long right now, so I guess we're going to call it for now, and we'll be right back with round two, guys. Yep. So thank you guys for watching, and we will see you guys in part two of our Breath of the Wild, what should we call this, cleanup? Yeah, Breath of the Wild cleanup, picking up the pieces. And then spitting out a few of our own. <laughs> All right. Yeah. See you guys next time.